Welcome everyone to the 125th live stream. How uh, you doing? I'm doing great. How about you? Doing awesome. How are people in the chat doing? I see. Lots I see to a wait for a response. Here. Just people in the chat over me. Yeah, I, I understand. <laughs> I'll just, I'm just gonna go over here. Just... <laughs> oh, we love you, LD. I was just trying to engage with the peeps, and I was hoping they were going to be like, and how's living dead? <laughs> <laughs> like it's a triangle type thing. <laughs> what do you say this was, 125? It is 125. And as yeah, you can hear, I did... we, we today have Fluffy's eye. Yay! Yeah. I'm here. And me. And living dead. The and you... zom zom. He wants just hugs and brains for payment. Yeah, well, mostly brains. They're delicious. Yes. We I can take the hugs. <laughs> <laughs> we also have cute pencil case. As you can see, her mark has already been left. Graffiti. Yep. <laughs> Great. We're gonna we're gonna remove layer three, I guess. <laughs> Let's just do that. <laughs> Hi, she we said. We can rename this thing, can't we? Yeah, um, yes. Keep pencil cases for flare. Oh no, wait, we spelled that layer wrong here. There we go. <laughs> flare. Fluff <laughs> layer. Maybe the chat can't see it because my cause spirit, spirit wind's covering it up, but yeah. Oh, uh, mm. it's now called fluff yeah. air. <laughs> it's fine. We can, we can, they can just know. They can feel the fluff. Oh, there I moved. <laughs> Did a little dance. <laughs> <laughs> so as Fluffy of the Fluffinator said, uh, if you have any art, please submit it. Uh, we're we only have one picture so far to critique, and if we don't get anything, well, it <laughs> usually means a quick stream. So let's uh let let's talk this picture. We're gonna remove the fluff layer. It's a castle. It's a castle. It's by Art Painting Sixty Two, which appears to be their first submission to our little corner. Yeah, of the sounds sounds unfamiliar. Always good to see new submissions. Mm hmm. So they are a very good artist. Like if you go if you go through their gallery, they have some amazing art. And they've actually done the Aurora Borealis a few times. They're... What did you say the name was again? It is Art Painter sixty seven. I'll send you the link to the gallery. Dun, 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 dun. Click. Oops. When we don't know someone, we tend to go through their history and see what else they've done to make sure our critique is actually making sense. Because we're like, hey, nice. you should draw this, but you've already done that. You know, it makes sense. Or it doesn't make sense. So here's... Yeah, they, do a, they do a lot of cool, like, rainbow art and stuff. And yeah, they've got some amazing, like, painting skills. It's great. I like that Moana one. I, I like the humans, yeah. So, let's talk your picture here. Um, your castle is very, very obviously the the new crystal castle thingy tree fort of doom that would <laughs> crystal how, tree fort like how do you get a dark room in a crystal tree fort it's probably like solid opaque on the outside from the looks of it lots of blinds maybe <laughs> <laughs> it, the the hallways do probably bounce the light around and carry it through the castle <laughs> be very very interesting to see probably mm. also very annoying to sleep in I'll just try to keep pencil case tree spirit dancing. That's really cute. <laughs> so I think the castle is perfectly fine. I would leave it as it is. It it works great where it is for how you're trying to pull off the picture. Your aurora borealis. It's very, very interesting. Uh, it's sort of like a mix between a galaxy and aurora borealis because the bottom of it. Wait a minute. What's up? How long, how long have we had a random planet in there next to Equestria? <laughs> it's very, very cool. It's just like there's so much like detail and extravagance in this 
sky like there's a whole i mean that looked it looks to me like a planet with a ring like a ring planet but maybe i'm mistaken maybe it's just sort of like negative space so i'm just seeing it wrong you know I mean, what? it looks very very cool very spacey you're very right and the the lines back here could i like all this stuff over here and over here could also be like the horse head nebula style where it's the gaseous cloud oh yeah 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 i see that now because I, I initially saw like pies of stone like huge stone towers like in the desert and stuff Hmm. That's kind of what it looked like to me at first. So that's one thing is just like negative space can say a lot. And I think in some cases you can end up accidentally using it. Uh, it's a good thing to study how to do it on purpose so that you know sort of what to to not accidentally do. Um, it, it sort of reminds me of, uh, the, what was it? There was like a game, I think it was a, it might have been a Dragon Age game or something, but it had a, it was like a, bun it was like a dragon's wing and then like the wing was kind of like, it had like a bleeding, it's like a silhouette of a dragon. The wing kind of, was bleeding down but it formed like people in the negative space and i thought it was really cool um i think i think that's what the game was but it's stuff like that it's, that can be really clever but sometimes you can accidentally get rid of i think like auroras are quite sort of like a squiggly line i think i, I will look look up pictures so we can tell uh, uh northern lights will do I can't spell anything when I'm trying to do a show. My brain cannot allocate enough space to typing .exe, to spelling .exe. So reading a bit further on their picture, they don't actually have a description on it, but I'm getting the sense it's not actually supposed to be Aurora, it's just supposed to be a galaxy. Yeah. Is it, I'm sort of trying to make sense of the shape that they've got to it. I do, I, I do love the sort of like the blue blue on the left and the the pink on the right this laser pointer is not actually working um yeah. got pink on this side blue on this side it's a nice like divert div division with the castle in the middle and, and like immediately you look at the picture the first focus is the castle so that's pretty cool um it is it's it is a very abstract concept you got going on where like the windows and stuff are all like they're sort of like an empty space in the castle where it's like a continuation of the content of the picture as opposed to the negative space that makes the castle uh but it does make it looking at it sort of like factually it looks like the castle is either like a 2d cutout or it's like you just so happen to have like like there's a, a bigger window that we can't quite see and then there's like a corridor and then like another window on the other side and we're just seeing straight through the castle but uh it's the kind of picture that doesn't really need to be like super accurate because it's like it's it's just a silhouette it's the shape of the castle to you know and we see that and that's what we get so i think you've achieved that quite nicely um but you could also experiment with having white windows or something if you wanted to play around with it but i i think it's good so one of the points of critique i have for you is stars mm -hmm. stars are not just white actually usually they aren't even white they're uh, somewhat colored like for instance if you go look up at our star the sun it's sort of a yellow or yellow. not for very long <laughs> <laughs> you don't don't stare at it just you know sideways glance or something anyway yeah it's, it's, it's yellow it's not white yeah it's a yellowy orange sort of color and yeah, and of course the, the, the actual color depends on the position in the atmosphere and how much atmosphere we're seeing it through, obviously, which is why it's orange towards the sunset and sunrise, the golden color, because there's more air between us and sun. And then there's... So, so where I'm going with this is color your stars. Your stars are suns or very unlikely planets but they could also be galaxies spiraling they're colorful space is very colorful yeah. um it's it's gorgeously colorful actually like here's yeah. you know, where's where's that picture there's nasa nasa doing its nasa thing look colors look at all those colors <laughs> that's just very a little colorful. picture of the nebula yeah. and galaxy because um yeah i mean i i don't know like games typically 
have like oh you got like frozen stars and fiery stars and they like study valley uh no study valley, starbound and i think in spore you had stuff like that but I, d I don't know how like accurate that is to real life because i don't know space stuff but if you look at stuff like the picture you just showed it definitely looks like it um but i would imagine because it makes sense because stars are explosions of burning gas essentially that are just, like, constantly burning and it makes sense you have different chemicals and different gases that create different effects so i could i could see that uh what i have though is like are these are all these little specs stars there's a lot of them uh my thing is where i, I saw this as a plant this this whole thing as a planet i don't know if that's true if that's actually what's supposed to be with like the ring going around it or if that's i'm just mistaking it is it looks like a lot of um stars uh, in front of it yeah it, it looks like it looks like very abstract and painty uh but what i was going to say was if or i think you need to sort of be more deliberate in some places if this is a planet rather than vaguely shaping some stuff to kind of look like a planet but we're not really sure it is if it is a planet make it look solid like it's looming in the sky like look at i mean I just open up skyrim and look up at the planets at night you've got these huge moons floating in the sky and anything else like that where you've got like the planets you can see them so crisp and clearly and it's it, you can, and it's such a like magnificent presence that it it's you can see the detail and everything uh because the stars really shouldn't be over a planet and it's like but it's still just soft enough that it it's just like a shape that looks like a planet but then you know i'm being thrown off by that because like these specs can't be stars if they're in front of what might be a planet because stars don't do that they are giant like hundreds of times bigger than this planet much further away from it um uh but you know again it might not be a planet it might be just like an abstract shape that you've done but it's like i don't know and i'm kind of confused by that so it's sort of <laughs> what's that spirit underneath it i just saw you so much <laughs> it's just like uh it, yeah it's, it's like know what you're trying to achieve with the picture and what you're trying to represent and like what it means to have that in the picture and how you're going to display that because it can be sort of it's always good to put stuff in like you don't need to worry too much usually about stuff being in a picture just because you want it to be there or you want to draw it it's fine but it's sort of like sometimes things kind of need to have a purpose or a necessity to be in uh, sort of like why they're in a in a, a painting because it can just sort of throw you off and put you down the wrong wrong path in a way yeah that's all i got for this one yeah it's pretty cool this is something we haven't we haven't critiqued a picture like this before so that's pretty cool mm -hmm. there's like yeah. seven thousand other pictures we've critiqued you managed to throw a <laughs> unique one at us congrats hands up <laughs> yay alright we have a picture from Plum let me just get it Ooh. up here <laughs> and when I was talking about the um like you looking up at planets in the sky and like in Skyrim and you look up and you've got huge moons looming over of course she Kipenza K sent a picture of the, the moon from Majora's Mask <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> 48 hours remains. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have not seen a mod for Skyrim that changes the moons to look like that. I don't know why. Totally I have... there. It's definitely. It oh, been. yeah. Yeah. This pony is cracked through a canvas. She's breaking the fourth wall. All right, Miss Klinga Dzanger. I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, yeah, you can send a DeviantArt link, imager, whatever method of sending a picture. Heck, if you want to mail it to us, you could mail Might it to, to one week. of us, <laughs> and then we could scan it in. You know, just figure some way out. There's just plenty of ways. Yeah. You could throw it at us at Discord. You can just put it up somewhere and send a link here in the chat, whatever you want. So this this picture was by Artemis Plum, right? Yes, this is by our yeah. lovely Plum. So Plum, you got any questions for us dumb. on this? Uh, nothing in particular. Just what could I improve on it? Sure. Okay, let's see. 
So I always see people doing the eyes like this way, uh, where it's sort of like they're bending. The the from what we see in in MLP and uh, MLP related things, typically the eyes tend to go this way, like they're angled from the snout outwards towards the face. I see a lot of people doing it this way, and it it never looks right to me. Um, I always like to try and remember. I have like a method for how the the face is built. I have like the snout, and then that leads into the bridge of the nose, which then leads into the eye. Um, so I always have this this routine of of building the faces, but uh, not everyone will build pictures the same way. And that's fine. Um, I just feel the eyes do look like they make more sense this way, but that's uh, that's my opinion anyway. Uh, looking for a good color that will show up on the canvas. Or a bright orange should be good. Yeah, be cool. Um, so yeah, you got the other thing. Uh, the hair was throwing me off a bit. Yeah, so LD sort of like looking at that. Uh, I'm I'm sort of I sort of looked past the actual shape, and I'm like, okay, so you've got the head here. The hair is probably going to be sort of like emanating out from this way, at the back of the head, sort of top of the head kind of way. Uh, I would actually, whether you have it going this way, which is slightly more of a challenge. You've got to have the hair coming out and flowing this way, or whether you have it going the other way. This way would be slightly easier. Um, that's sort of a more natural flow. But I understand if you want the character's hair to go this way. Uh, just sort of try to think about the 3D aspect of it. Like, uh, a mistake met plenty of us, myself definitely included, make is we often, most of the time, we make the ponies' hairstyle looks like actual hair, and we forget sometimes. That some of them look more like actual manes on horses, like like Twilight's do it does. Um, and sometimes it's good to sort of remember that when you're trying to figure out how it works, because you can you can get like okay, so if it's got this like mohawky area, um, and it's going out, come ah oh, so I'm trying to figure out where it's starting here. Um, but it's coming coming out of the head and then flipping around this way anyway. Um, not sure it's something with the layering i think this where it's like curving back round is going up and then curving back round is a bit confusing um it's hard to sort of fit like when i when i'm doing this i keep wanting to do it the other way around like this um i'm not sure it's hard to figure out where how to make this sit properly but what's easier i think is is try, trying to fix something that's already in place can sometimes be harder so why don't we try something else so head head shape here we go. Let's just build this up from the ground. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a thing quick, real quick. Uh, do something. Uh, do do insert layer. And do. one sec. I forget how to do a, something. Excuse me. <laughs> Bless you. Uh, I think it was under was it under tools? Yes. Flood. No, that wasn't it. Damn it. <laughs> Edits. Fill. Uh huh. Okay, I f okay, I remembered. There we go. Um, just to have a bit more drawing agency. So, uh, where was I? Where's my brush? There it is. Here's the head shape. Let's go fresh. We've got so many lines in here. Let's just start fresh a little bit. Head shape. Here's the, the head direction. Coolio. Uh, let's lighten that a little bit. That's hard to do without erasing it completely. My other color has disappeared. There it is. So then it's like, okay, so it's now, uh, I I am not good with this sort of angle, but we will persevere. Uh, which layer am I on? Okay. My pen has disappeared. There it is. <laughs> I keep doing that. Smiley pone. Keep smiley pone. Uh, then, of course, I'll, I'll do what I was talking about earlier, just to show it again. I'll go snout goes straight into the bridge of the nose and then that will curve around to the eyes. This is very sloppy, but take my word for it. <laughs> um, whatever your expression is. And so, so it's like, okay, so now we've got the head shape, or we've got the face, then here's, here's a little soft pony face going on there. Uh, and then it's, then it's like ear time, so the ears roughly roughly here where, where LD put it. Uh, then, so I, I make sure not to do the heads too round, like they sort of have an angle to them. Uh, but yeah, it's like, okay, we've got this this head shape here now. Cool. Cooly-ooly. 
temple and top of the head, cool. Um, uh, so now we can figure out the main. And I usually use like a different color. And it's like, so the, this main is sort of like, they've just got like the swish on the top and then they got like the ponytail. Um, so it's sort of like, okay, so like, here, here's the swish, maybe it should come up this way. So it's coming sort of forward and then go like this. I don't know how, she's in sort of like a running pose, but like, she, it doesn't look like she's actually running because I think she's smashing through a wall or something. So. <laughs> I don't know if you can That's explain. That's what she's doing. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think we need to worry too much about like the wind blowing the main back or anything. Um, just going. Okay. So we don't want to cover up the eyes too much, do we? Because there's pretty eyes. So bring it up a little bit. Keep it keep it loose and sketchy because hair is is very loose, and we've got more of a flow here now. This might cover up the other ear, but okay. Let's just go all in with that and have it completely covered. We might see like a little bit at the bottom here but there we go and so you got this you can put some little bits of like feathering and make it look more natural let's straighten up this a little bit so you got that coming in there and it's like okay so we can see sort of like how this hair bends and flows and like how it moves on the body um this the the braid is that like coming out of the side of the like of where the hair is or is it like sort of tucked around can't quite tell uh, and yes, so it's supposed to come space. from the side. Uh, I've post, uh, posted a reference in uh, in the Discord chat. Oh yeah, I see that. that that's. I'm trying to figure out like how it joins. Uh, oh, it's like a seashell. Uh, looks like it's coming up from sort of like behind the ear. Yeah. Um, I would sort of have it like tucked in a little bit more, and then then join through to where you where you're doing it, um, just to sort of reiterate and. Have the shell, given the angle, I think the shell, looking at the reference, would be sort of like, just sort of tucking around. Like if I just draw, I've, draw use, use what you've got here. Um, uh, let me clean that up a little bit. So you got the... What this. is this Zara mean? Have, have the shell sort of tuck. You can tuck it around like this, and it's like, oh, here's the shell. Um, just looking at the positioning of it. It also but yeah. Was... The, the, the hair is hair is a very loose, wavy, light and gentle thing. Um, it's gonna make it messy and make it make it flow. The drawing it right from the very beginning, as something that's uh, got volume and flow to it, it, it helps a lot more than trying than just trying to fix up later. That being said, though, it does help to sort of get the general idea of the area that it's supposed to be taking up first. But you gotta sort of keep it loose because the more strictly you do it, the harder it is to keep it. To, to change it later on and keep it open. So that's so why you build it up first with like a big, broad, uh, but sort of lo loosely defined area. And then you can go through and add detail as you go. Um, which is typically what I, I do. And I'll show, I'll do an example over here next to the, um, I'll, just, I'll just draw like a, a little, a little pone, pone face. Um, Look at my pone, yeah. my pone is amazing. Little pony face. Right, so if I'm like, okay, so the uh, main's gonna be like this. And we got like the ear, whatever. Um, uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of an interesting design. Okay, whatever. So it's like, cool, I'm gonna get that, see if I can get that gentle, and then I'm gonna go over again and be like, okay, so now I've got the general area. I can add the more detail on everything, you know. So then that help, helps you keep everything in in place without having to work it out as you're trying to do detail and make sure that everything stays where it's meant to be. But then you can sort of go nuts with making it look nice and loose. Does that make any sense? It does, yep. Um, just looking at the main they have and the main you have, you're just missing all that back volume. Because the yeah. entire mane isn't put into the braid, which is weird. Yeah. Because there is so much hair coming off that back of the, their pony. Yeah. Wow. Where did the braid come from? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I'm, if... I'm not sure where it ends either. <laughs> yeah, because it cuts off into the icon. <laughs> 
very long mane. Um, but yeah, that's that's another thing. It's like when you're designing hair for a character, it's like bear in mind that ponytails, braids, and stuff like that is taking the hair and then forming it into a shape. Um, that's also something to keep in mind. So that's all I got for this. You got anything else? Any other questions? Um, I was wondering about um, the, the, the crushed paper. Someone I showed the drawing to uh, said they, they were weirded out by uh, these things, by the, what they are and how. That doesn't how look like is, paper uh, to me. Gradient on it. So you said this is, she's supposed to be crashing through paper? Uh, yeah. That, I thought she was crashing through like a screen or something. Yeah, this yeah look just like literally the fourth wall. Yeah, she's That's supposed to crash through, through a poster. Through a poster, ah, I see what you're doing. Um, yeah, it's, it's the, the thing with pa paper rips in its own very unique sort of way from how an object breaks. It's not really like a shatter. Uh, you know, you put you you're trying to burst something through a piece of paper, and essentially, it will bend and stretch along with what you're doing until enough tension happens that it rips. And those rips, once there is one, it will typically follow through because then that's where all the tension is going into that opening, and it will continue along that rip mostly. But get get a piece of paper and just like or or something, whatever method you you can manage, just try and punch your way through it, or just push something through it. Maybe not something super thin and sharp like a pencil, because that'll just make like a hole, and it'll be like a neat and tidy hole. Um, but what what Kipenska is doing here, what she what I think she's trying to do is sort of showing like how the paper will fold backwards, because um, currently it's like there's just sort of like a rip, there's just like an opening in the paper here and a couple of cracks. But what's going to happen is yeah, you you have you have a sheet of paper, and then an object goes pew through it what's going to happen is that paper is going to open up. So you've got like a, say, okay, there's a circle here. This is where the ball comes through. That's a circle of paper that needs to move. So this is all paper at the moment, but we need to move it out of the way. So it's like, oh, okay. So there's some here where it's ripped, ripped up uh, out of the way. Let's go here and we can fold it over where this paper has, has burst out from. And so, yeah, there's, there's the hole. That's where this balls come from. Uh, but even so, that's a very general, just from memory, uh, just trying to sort of illustrate an understanding of something that we're doing right now. Um, ri uh, ripped. If you just look up rich papers, we're just going to be like someone ripped one in half, isn't it? Yeah, so it's it's a difficult thing to find. Oh, wait, no, there are a couple of there are a couple of instances of like paper where something's passed through. That's, that's pretty cool. It's pretty helpful. Um, this one's pretty good. I'll link something in the Discord. Um, Maybe LD can show it on the on the stream. <gasps> uh, let me just paste that. Oh god, long link. Oh god, it, it <laughs> I hit the character limit at two thousand characters. Oh my god. Uh, let, let me try that again. It's, I can't be it. That's that's huge. It's like a vector stock image. So, god, uh, I, I I'm gonna link the page. That'll be much easier than <laughs> this super long, too big for Discord link. There we go. It's a stock image page to be purchased for one dollar credit or whatever. I don't know ways to buy. They got like their own site credit or whatever. But yeah, that that sort of thing is helpful. That that show you like how it's sort of meant to go because you can see it's got like the tear coming out the side. I don't know. It's it's a very hexagonal looking image, but I think that's because that's what's going to typically happen with paper. Um, I don't have, do I have some like in this? So what the Fluffy's getting at is use your references. Yep. What I did. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I can't punch through it. This is a tricky... Oh, I'm just, I'm just punch, I'm just creasing it. <laughs> oh, oh, we've made impact. <laughs> um, so here's another interesting thing. I'm gonna just literally take a picture of what I just did. I had some doodles on the other side of this paper, but whatever. Um, <laughs> I wasn't using it anymore. Uh, 
trying to type my password in one handed. Voice chat. Send. Oh, p picture. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. So this this is this is this is interesting. This, here's a reference for you that I just did in like five seconds for you in the voice chat. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, I just got a hairbrush stuck in Trippy's favor. So the one thing I wanted to illustrate on look how it's like. I, there was no way I was going to do this without bending the entire sheet of paper around the impact of the thing going through it. So that's another thing. Um, is the this sort of like shape distortion? So you can see how it sort of creates like a mountain and ripples out, even if you don't have this huge like shape bending, because it's just meant to be sort of like a, on a poster. Uh, you can at least do something like this, where it's it. You've got it sort of building into this shape where she's bulging through like you can you can imagine her like walking into this paper and creating this bulge as she's pushing into it and then she finally rips through and then there she is thank <laughs> you Ben's case try <laughs> I think it depends it depends on the type of paper and how it I was just like ramming an object through it <laughs> But I don't know, yeah, re references, sometimes they can be hard to find, sometimes you can get the wrong sort of one, but it can... <laughs> nice. Uh, sometimes it can uh, be really help helpful if you've got the right right one, or, or if, I think it's just sort of like understanding the reference properly, and sometimes some things can be very hard, like this is a typically, this is a hard thing to have to draw, and it, it is going to be a challenge, and I commend you for taking on this task. Um, but just sort of, I think sometimes trying it again, a fresh approach, try again with like a different reference or a different idea going behind it, or just practice doodling this concept. Like, oh, maybe I'm just going to draw ripped holes in paper a couple of times and just get that practice in, and then you'll have a better understanding of how to bend that around this concept. Making the rip larger, like the hole larger, is definitely going to help. Because yeah. right now you manage to shove more pony through the hole than the hole exists. So that's about all I got. So, any further questions? Uh, I don't think so. Thanks. All right, that's what we're here for. Yeah. Getting things. Sorry, I'm so rambly today. Apparently, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> the giant yawns say otherwise. Oh wait, no, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> Paste from. Oh. So, so we got one from Miss Kindinger. One day we're gonna pretend we pronounced that name right. <laughs> yes, you just gotta. Even if you mispronounce it, say it with such agency that it, like you just you're confident. Clang, as in the alien from. I don't remember which alien. Isn't that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Yes! Well done. I don't even watch that show. So... Ah, there it is. Alright, do Turn you have any mind. questions offhand for us? Doing the waiting game. Did like a car just speed through your room? Uh, no. The road near my house. Oh. I'm surprised it got picked up. <laughs> on my mic. Probably because I just started talking at the same time. Mostly about the shading and general posing. If it's correct. Well, I mean the pose is right. If you're going mm. for a pony standing over another pony biting the ear. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the, I think the the proportions of where the characters are is okay. Um, the, I mean, the only thing, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the posing, but the character at the back here is very stiff. Like, they're just sort of standing with all the legs completely symmetrical, and it's uh, it's a very stiff sort of pose. Like, they almost look like a figurine. You could just, like, 
you pinch their back and pick them up and move them and just put them down somewhere else. Um, but it's it's not really something that super needs a big dynamic dramatic pose. But at the very least, you can sometimes sort of make things a bit asymmetrical. Like you can have a leg coming through, coming out just behind them, uh, and then have another one sort of leaning in like this. And then like boom, automatically we've got something with a little bit more a little bit more life to it. Um, but that's uh, is an optional thing. Like I said, it's, what you've got isn't wrong. It's just there's always ways that you can sort of make things a little bit more uh, fulfilled and lively. And it's just a way of, of pushing yourself to experiment with what you what might be a possibility. Yeah, dynamic just being sort of like uh, the opposite of static. Like right now, this pony looks very still. Like their legs are just straight and rigid and they're just standing there really still. Whereas doing something to put a little bit more... Uh, asymmetry in the in the legs makes it feel like they they just like have walked here and stopped or like they're a little bit just sort of like that they they are a creature that moves i mean they're not going to be standing completely still anyway uh, i don't think it's possible for us to stand completely still there's always minute movements but it's well, uh yeah, aside you. from that we also just be part well, of the I mean, you're, 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 <laughs> oh yes because you don't have a heartbeat right <laughs> You're an undead, um, but yeah, we uh, uh, even without that, you know, you sometimes fidget and just like move around. It, it's it's natural. Not you don't typically like stand somewhere completely like your legs just spread at like the perfect like couple of foot apart, and then just like your arms to your side. Like you, you're typically going to stand in in a more dynamic way. Like you might lean towards something or just sort of put your weight onto one leg or stuff like that. It it's just sort of about throwing things up so they don't look completely artificial and posed, if that makes sense. So what you been up to, LD? So me, um, I was thinking about alternative posing, and I think moving the pony behind the changeling forward and placing their hoof on the shoulder is going to give more interaction between the two characters. Um, slightly more personal, as opposed to I'm a foot away yeah. grabbing your ear. I actually just did a picture like that Aww. recently for a commission. Um, and it, it it can be a challenging pose, but it can be very cute. I'm going to send that one as well, just for reference's sake. Um, it was one that we actually critiqued here on the stream as well, so you can see what became of it. Nice. But that's sort of like her foot leaning over them kind of pose. Perhaps with their head leaning on them or biting the other ear, but it's up to you how you how you do. I mean, it could still be biting the same ear, just they could be coming from the left. You know, there's all sorts of possibilities as to how you approach a, a scene, and it helps sometimes to just sort of think about like how that scene developed, where what led into it, and where it's going after that, because then it can sort of help. <laughs> He's just throwing the picture. Right I couldn't get it free; it was sticking to the border window. <laughs> Gosh, but yeah, it's, it's just about sort of coming up with a more uh, sort of understanding the setting and how the characters are interacting with one another and imagining that actually happening in your head and how you're telling a story with your picture because that's really what you're trying to do. Um, um so, so yes, shading, shading. Yeah, I don't think there's much really wrong with the, the shading at all uh, i mean a few bits could be neatened up i suppose um like the i feel like there's something oh i'm not even on a pen or anything apparently um i feel like the way this shading comes down like this i, I feel like there's something wrong about that but i don't know if, if you have any idea ld yeah it doesn't it doesn't show the form of the face so if the if the muzzle sticks out you're you're going to change the direction of the of this right here that shadow it's going to move with the face, so it's going to go down like this, and then forward, and then move back down. Because the face sticks out. Now, the muzzles are sort of big. Um, they're also small and adorable. Uh, things like your horn, uh, you have, well, we can't see it anymore, but uh, the, the light goes down the horn, and then you had shadow overlapping where that light was touching, which doesn't make sense for the nature of your light source but then if we also look at the light source it appears to be coming from 
the exact side of them somewhere somewhere like exactly 90 degrees because we've split their face but then you've gone ahead and laid a mane over in front of the face but not covered up a good amount of that light that would be hitting that face so like an area like this would be easily covered by that mane because that mane sticks out a lot uh, you also run into small issues like over on the shoulder that shoulders covered up by the neck uh, areas like that would are, are so easy to miss um, the way I like to break pictures down for me to avoid missing elements or just help myself not miss elements is I draw my light source in so if it's 90 degrees to these people I'm gonna place the big light right here and it's gonna be shining off to them and I'll, sometimes I'll even add directionality arrows if I need it especially if there's multiple light sources and from there I'll work out how it hits the body and how the body's gonna react and I find the easiest way for that is for me to give it more shape, more 3D shape to it. So during my under sketch, all this types of stuff like the head, I'll have skeletons on it. And be like, whoa, I got a ball of a head. And I'm going to change up my color real quick. I got a ball of a head. Cool. Now I know that's a ball shape. Things like the arms, our cylinders. Whoop. Well, that didn't come out as well as I hoped. There we go. Yeah. Uh, and by forming the 3D shapes, then I can inform myself how the light's going to land across it. Might not work perfectly for you. Might just be totally out left field. Might be right up your alley. I'm not sure. This is just the way I pull that off some days. Other days I fake it till I make it and hope no one else notices my mistakes. Um... Last thing is things like the shadow. Uh, the shadow on the ground. You've just done a round shadow as though the yeah. light source is directly above them like they're a video game character. You 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 pull, you decided the light's going to be on the side, so let's just... Pff, big, long shadows. We don't even need to give them shape because the light's directly on the side. So we know it's overlapping the bulk majority of that horse. We're going to open up the legs here a bit. And it's just big, long shadows draped. Easy peasy. Yeah. That's what I got for this one. Any other questions for us? Or any remarks, Fluffy? Uh, I don't have anything else, no. I'm just doing exactly what so I was looking at the, the shadows on the bottom as well. And exactly what you said. same page <laughs> huzzah us no problem mm -hmm. so anyone else that? oh that's adorable anyone else have any oh, we're, we're gonna do this we're <laughs> dueling talking <laughs> Oh no, it's just, uh, you, you were like, oh, that's adorable. So I was like, it is. Was that two Kipensky cases usual? Because yes, that was adorable. Yeah. Alright. Oh my gosh, it's now getting fluffy. It's been infected. <laughs> Anyone else have any art they'd like to get critiques on? Any other questions they'd like to ask? Or. I don't know. I, I don't have a third one. Embrace the fluff. Yes. Praise Lord Fluff <laughs> and all the fluffiness he has brought us. I just realized as well, like I I I turned off the um the, the faded layer that I did because we were talking about the colors and everything, but it's so I was I was coloring with the actual like I was color picking from the image and it looks like the completely wrong color on the on the stream. <laughs> it's like way darker green, but that's because I was using the actual shadow color. <laughs> if no one else has got any picks, then this is the 
dueling and uh, this <laughs> tree. <laughs> well, in three <laughs> seconds. Can you count us down? Oh, thank point you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you all for joining us. And uh, we're here again next week. I don't suspect any of us are off next week. Heck, we might even have Ali Claw back. We don't know. She's a busy girl Maybe. right now. She decided she wanted to move further away from Going me. Going on adventures. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, see ya. See y'all next time, I guess. For the 126th. Yeah. We didn't party for 125th, maybe 150. I don't know. We'll figure something out. Yeah. <laughs> it's just numbers. Yay. Glad to have you, Glang. Yay. Bye. And everyone else, too. Thank you for coming. <laughs>